All right, y'all, welcome back to another episode of Retro Rewire. My name is JJ and I am in desperate need of a haircut, my goodness. But today's episode isn't about that, it's about continuing to explore the game shops in Kyoto, Japan. Now in the previous episode, we went into a local Hard Off. And if you don't know, Hard Off is a used electronic shop that so, just so happens to sell video games and it's found all throughout Japan. So if you ever happen to see one, definitely drop by because you never know what you will find. Probably something good. <laughs> but anyhow, in today's episode, we're gonna go into a Surugaya and Surugaya is another shop that's found throughout Japan. And I actually documented their locations in Akihabara, Tokyo in my Akihabara tour video. So if you haven't seen both of those videos, please be sure to do so. I'll leave links in the description below. But anyhow, um, Surugaya is a specialty shop. And aside from selling video games, they sell everything from posters, any, everything and anything manga related, collectibles, and trading cards among other things. And I'm gonna be specifically focusing on video games. And this location was kind of cool because you know it had it was two floors, and although the actual building wasn't so so large, it was uh, well stocked, which is something that we all want to see and that we like to see. Um, but anyhow, without further ado, you know, sit back, relax, and let's enjoy Surugaya in Kyoto. So here we are outside, so let's make our way inside. And straight away, a virtual boy on display. Now, the unit was off, of course, you know, during times of COVID-19, you don't want to mess with that ancient tech. Years of germs there, but pretty cool system. And all these games, 100 yen. Tons and tons of games, and there's even a Super Famicom there. And you'll find a lot of common stuff like this here. Game fell, fell out of my hand, but... I'll leave that in there, give you guys the truth this time of what really goes down. And then we have Wii and Wii U titles galore. Well, not so many, but you know, I definitely like both of those systems, tons and tons of games for both of them. Feel free to pause if you want a closer look. And then here, just a bunch of miscellaneous figures and doodads. Um, as you can see, there's a little shy guy. And the one that stood out to me was this uh, cloud figure from Final Fantasy VII. I really, really wanted it, but 16 bucks, a little bit steep. Got to be mindful of the budget, you know. We'll eventually head upstairs, but before that, take a look at this. Super Famicom Loose Carts. Now, tons and tons of games here, and let's, let's take a closer look at a few. We have Gradius 3 here for 10 bucks. Excellent shooter. And we have another shooter here, Area 88, otherwise known as UN Squadron, at 12 bucks. Very expensive back home. And then here are the boxed games. And again, just tons and tons of games. So, so many. Um, for example, here we have Combat Tribes by uh, Technos from the makers of Double Dragon. There's a Mario RPG there on the right hand side of the screen 39 bucks for that combat tribes pretty cool game it's been years since i've played it then here we have donkey kong country 3 for 6 super castlevania 4 this is a must own in any uh super famicom collection this is a masterpiece of a game and dragon's magic otherwise known as Dragon's Lair. Now, this is a quirky game. I, I used to own it back uh, in the States, and it's very, it's definitely challenging, but for the wrong reasons. But, yeah, tons and tons of games here, boxed. And this one is new to me. This is a Goemon uh, Mystical Ninja. It's like an isometric type of game, but haven't seen it before, so kind of neat. And here are the Famicom disc and uh, cart games. Tons and tons of Famicom games. Now, I don't collect for this system, but look at all that. You can spend an hour there easily just sorting through all of it. Then we have the handhelds here, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Advance. 15 bucks for this Metroid 2. And then here we have Luigi making a cameo. Uh, 
And Metroid Zero Mission at 60 bones. Haven't played this game, but I definitely want to. And then next we have Super Mario Advance 4, which is actually Super Mario Bros. 3. I actually have this in a loose cart. I paid like two bucks, but 28 for that one there. And then here we have just a bunch of miscellaneous accessories. And figures. Gotta love figures. They had tons and tons of these little figures, and I definitely like buying these just to kind of decorate the old studio. But tons and tons of stuff. And this plushie doll just on display, not actually for sale. And here's the display case. Look at all this Switch stuff. Now, if you look in the top shelf there, you can see an Animal Crossing uh, Switch. But tons and tons of stuff. Then we have... Uh, some interesting items here. Orange controller down at the bottom. And then in this case here, that RGB cable. I should have picked that up, but 46 bucks. Retro, retro Freak Basic. And some handhelds. Look at that orange Game Boy Advance at 30 bucks. Very tempting, that one. But let's make our way, keep it moving here. Some loose carts. Feel free to pause so you can get a, a closer look. And um, what I'm going to do, this pretty much wraps up the, the first section which focused on Nintendo related goods. Missed out on the cube, but perhaps next time. But anyhow, let me go ahead and cut back to me and I'll show you guys what I picked up from this first initial section. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, y'all, so let me show you some of the games that I got from this first section, with the first one being Super Mario Kart on the Super Famicom, and that came in at nine bucks, or 900 yen, to be more accurate. And then next to that, we got Super Mario Bros. 4, Super Mario World, and that came in at 11 bucks. And both of those are complete in box, you know, include the manual and whatnot. Then down below that, we have a little enemy figure from the, uh, from the Mario universe. I can't remember, I, I don't know exactly his name, but you know, I like collecting these little figures, so we got that. And then as you saw in the video, a copy of Donkey Kong Country 3. That came in at six bucks, and then down below that, we have a little Goomba in the ice, ice skating shoe from Mario Bros 3. Kind of a neat little uh, figure. And then next to that, we have the old Super Famicom. And it's running Super Mario Kart, as you can see on the screen there. But that's not all. Let's go ahead and uh, let's continue and let me show you what else I got. All right, guys, as you can see here, one of the games that I ended up picking up was uh, or is a uh, Biohazard on the GameCube or otherwise known as uh, the Resident Evil remake and it was kind of cool because you know four bucks included the memory card little stickers you know who doesn't like stickers uh, the two discs and a little bit of the you know manual and some other inserts so pretty good deal on that um, unfortunately I did not show any GameCube games or much of you know any Saturn games so I kind of messed up there but anyhow and then I guess the big game in this section is Akumajo Dracula Super Castlevania 4 pretty cool cover um, I think I prefer the North American cover you know because it has a, a little bit more of a cool factor but this one's this one's definitely unique and as you can see um, here we have the old Super Famicom again uh, it's on the game is plugged in and there it goes but anyhow, let's go ahead and uh, continue on. Uh, I think next we'll focus on the PlayStation stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, take it away. And here we have some PlayStation uh, portable shooters. Excellent. Kind of high price though. And then uh, White Knight Chronicles Dogma Wars here. And Metal Slug Complete. This is an excellent, an excellent uh, anthology of the Metal Slug games. But look at all these PSP games. Quite a few. And uh, we'll continue with the handhelds. We have the PlayStation Vita section, which is right next to it. 
next to the PSP section. But um, this is a wonderful system, and most of my collection is actually digital, but there are a number of uh, titles that I would like to have physical copies of, like these Ninja Gaiden Sigma um, Plus games. Then we have the PlayStation 1 section. Didn't focus too much on this section uh, this time around, but they did have this R-Type Delta. Kind of pricey, but uh, excellent game. But they had tons and tons of these uh, PlayStation 1 games. Then we have the King of Fighters 2003 coming in at 8 bucks. Pretty inexpensive game no matter where you are, but their PS2 section was, you know, so-so. We have this uh, World Heroes Gorgeous Collection, which is kind of expensive uh, here in Japan. But interesting series. I like it. Then Eco for three. And then I'm going to do a comparison here. I'm, I'm definitely liking the Xbox version a little bit more, the cover. And then this Biohazard 2 controller with the herbal set. 20 bucks now I really really wanted this but I've seen it at a at a hard off before for five bucks complete in box and that's the only reason why I didn't get it then we have a few more accessories here and um, then look at these soundtracks Super Metroid Donkey Kong Country and Ultima Super Metroid 300 Donkey Kong Country 400 Ultima 200, super, super expensive, wow. We have a Gaia Seed, Captain Commando, PC Engine, best collection, you know, all in the triple digits. PSP Go back there for 150. Yeah, this stuff is pricey. But anyhow, this is uh, the PlayStation section. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I ended up picking up, and then we'll continue and we'll go upstairs. So let's go ahead and cut back to me. All right, guys, as you can see, here are the three games that I ended up getting from this section. Now, I totally forgot to show anything, uh, much of anything Xbox related, but I ended up getting this uh, Ninja Gaiden 2 on the 360. You know, this is a masterpiece in action gaming. And for eight bucks, totally in English, I couldn't pass it up. Next to that, we have Eco on the PlayStation 2. Now I have this on the PS3 as well as the North American version on PlayStation 2. But this is another masterpiece and for this price everything made sense so I had to pick that up. And then we have Dead Space 2, the North American edition and a limited edition at that. And the reason why I got this is not only do I get the full game of Dead Space 2 but I also get Dead Space Extraction which was a, a Wii light gun type of a shooter so I definitely, you know, I have a move, I like my light gun games so I definitely had to get that. But yeah, those are the games that I got and as you can see there in the background we have Eco Running. But now we're going to go ahead and go upstairs and check out the other goodies that they have so let's keep the show going. And here we have some figures kind of placed on the way up to the second floor. And I think from all the figures that I saw here, I kind of regret not buying Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball. Should have got the Piccolo, dang it. Perhaps next time, who knows. But anyhow, let's go ahead and hit things off strong. We have the Neo Geo, both uh, the console and the CD version. Now the CD, Neo Geo CD, uh, the games are becoming harder and harder to find because people like me snatching them up, importers, you know. Some of the games are, you know, fairly inexpensive, you know, and it uh, has a great library like this, The Last Blade. Freaking love that game. And I actually prefer The Last Blade over The Last Blade 2. There's something about the first one that I, I really dig. Then we have the Saturn. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, shoot much uh, sh Saturn games in great detail. Then we have some Sega Dreamcast games. We'll come back here in a sec. Then we have some Sega CD, some MSX games down there, Mega Drive, and PC Engine at the very end there. But let's go ahead and go back to the Dreamcast. Freaking love this system. And as you can see here, Biohazard 2 for 14 bucks. Should have got it, but I messed up. And then we have Last Blade 2 next to that. 
and some Choo Choo Rocket. Pretty fun uh, puzzle game. But yeah, Sega Dreamcast, sweet console. And 32X, you don't really see a lot of 32X games, especially in Japan. And, you know, look at all these games, you know, complete in box. I've never actually played one, and I, you know, don't know if I ever will. <laughs> then we have some Wonder Swan, Game Gear, and uh, Neo Geo Pocket games. I used to have a Neo Geo Pocket in the pretty cool system. And if you see there, the Gunstar Heroes on the Game Gear, 63 bucks, But it's complete. Then we have a, an assortment of uh, loose games for the Mega Drive, Game Gear, and PC Engine. And I forget what game this is, but it caught my attention because of the cover. But as you can see, it's some kind of like strategy RPG, which is not really my cup of tea. So let's put that one back. It might be good. I don't know though. But yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, Mega Drive games, you know, complete in box, and some of them have like sweet, sweet covers like this. My goodness. I definitely would like to play that game. I'm gonna have to look it up in greater detail. But here's one that I know: Sonic Three. Twenty-eight bucks. Apparently, Michael Jackson had. Uh, had a hand in making the music for that game. But yeah, all sorts of Mega Drive games. Some of them are sports games, but some of them, you know, some of them are worth uh, picking up. Like this, the story of Thor, Landstalker, that's a great game. Alien Storm, pretty cool cover. Really grotesque. Then we have some Golden Axe there and Thunder Force 3. Now that's a classic. And then we have this in Sector X. Not sure what that's about. I need to, that's another game that I need to look up, but it looks very interesting. ESWAT. All sorts of good stuff, you know, and feel free to pause if you want to look at the games in detail. Then we have PC Engine games. Now, this is a, a system that's kind of uh, pretty expensive to collect for. But I don't know. I think it's kind of number of worthy games like this for the super graphics Dai Maikai Murapa 85 bucks now my local hard off also has that game but it's even more expensive at 110 but here's one 11 bucks and for me I think that Shinobi is the standout title in this uh, collection although you know uh, bare knuckle there that's a worthy one Streets of Rage. Now here is the display case, and this thing is just loaded with good goodness. I mean, come on. Right there, like, look at that laser active. Now that's kind of like a... And then a 32X, I, oh wow, I didn't even... Uh, not till watching this video did I... Uh, two of them, wow. Two 32Xs. PC Engine Duo... PC Engine Duo R, very expensive. But if you think that's expensive, some of these games, you know, triple digits. Look at Splatterhouse 3, Contra Hardcore, Splatterhouse 2, Turtles. And even Batman Forever is priced at a premium. You'll see it here in a sec. Look at that. 85 bucks. I don't know if you guys ever played that game, but it's definitely not worth that price. And then here's some PC Engine games. We have Kiki Kai Kai, now known as, uh, or also known as Pocky and Rocky. Then we have Cotton there for 98. But yeah, you got to have deep pockets to, to shop out of this. Shop out of this case, display case. And you'll see what I mean here in a sec. Because they got some Neo Geo games and man, oh man. 200 and what, 230 for that Turtles game. But look at that, Metal Slug X, $4,000. $4,000. My goodness. That's crazy expensive. But yeah, feel free to pause if you want to take a closer look at some of the games here. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and cut back to me, and I'll show you guys what I picked up uh, from the second floor. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Vampire Chronicle, um, one of the games that I ended up getting in the upper floor. These are the two games, uh, Vampire Chronicle for matching service and King of Fighters 99 Evolution, both on the Sega Dreamcast, uh, both complete, pretty good deals. Eight bucks there for KOF and 20 for Vampire. But those are pretty much all the games that I ended up getting and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and cut back to me and we'll wrap up the video. So let's go ahead and uh, get her done. All right, y'all, so we're pretty much at the end of the video, so if you've stuck around this long, a big thank you. Now, pretty much this covers all of the game shops that I visited while on vacation in Kyoto, Japan. Now, I'm gonna continue to document game shop. Mind you, it might be another hard off or another surugaya or something entirely different, but keep a lookout for those types of videos. But anyhow, thank you for checking out Retro Rewire. My name is JJ, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Ciao. Enjoy Surugaya in Tokyo. Ah, Kyoto. <laughs> Large. It was pretty much well stocked with video games. Nah, too many. Blah, blah, blah. Pretty much, you know, it's a it's a nerd's paradise. And in the what? I think you can hear that little buzzing, that saw running my video. <laughs>